everyone, and welcome to So Please Understand. I'm Holly Noon, the host, and if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button below, like, and comment on this video. And today's guest is going to be Jerome Sanislaus, and I had him on here because we're all about talking about representation and how that matters, and he's a pilot. And so I wanted to tell the story of a Black pilot on this show. And so, Jerome, tell us, like, where you grew up and what inspired you to be a pilot. Uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. That's where I'm from. Uh, my parents are from Trinidad and Tobago. So okay. um, I lived there first, and then I came here about like, when I was about four years old. And then I've been in Brooklyn ever since. And uh, after high school, I went off to the Marine Corps, and I... You know, did that for 10 years, then I got out, went to college. Um, initially, when I got out of college, like my plan was to be a, a high school biology teacher, but going through like the biology program, I realized, hey, I like science, just don't like it enough to like have to learn it to teach it to people. So gotcha. um, I thought about my entire life just wanting to be a pilot, and that's what I've always wanted to do. But I you know, never really pursued it because I didn't think it was something that was like possible for me because I never saw a black pilot, never had like a aviation mentor, just didn't really think it was like a real thing that, you know, kids from Brooklyn did. I thought, you know, being aviation was for like the affluent kids in the suburbs. So, you know, I start, you know, I settled for other things, you know, and yeah, so after that sophomore year, in that sophomore year of college, well, basically after that freshman year of college, I, you know, thought about all the, you know, dope things I've done in my life. And, you know, the fact that I had a 4.0 average when my entire life, I was like a mediocre student. So I was like, all right, college was a, you know, you know, time for new beginnings for me since I did go, you know, so much later in life. And yeah, I just applied, applied to an aviation program at a school in New York. And I got in and that's what started my career as a pilot or okay. my life as a pilot. Okay, so were you in like a pilot, like a program, like a program? Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a professional pilot program. So that, so that degree plan made pilots, made commercial pilots. Oh, commercial pilots, like they could go work for airlines. Yeah, or like yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, you didn't have the hour requirements because you can get all the licenses and be nowhere near what's required for an airline, but it gave you the licenses to continue to just basically just build your hours until, you know, at that point, it was just an hour thing. So you can just gotcha. go fly as much as you want. And once you got the amount of hours that you needed, then you can apply for an airline, but you already had the the rating to do it. Oh, gotcha. And you have your private pilot's license correct yeah i have a private pilot's license yeah um um yeah i, I kind of stopped after after that you know so okay. hey <laughs> many of us don't so hey yeah. um but what was your journey to becoming a pilot because i know we talked offline previously so and it has, yeah, that's it a was, very interesting story <laughs> yeah it was a very stressful um thing <laughs> to do uh <laughs> It was, you know, definitely filled with adversity. And, um, you know, there was a time where I did quit. I quit. I was like, you know what? Because it's just so expensive. You know, it costs yeah. about $210 an hour. And, oh my gosh. you know, like, yeah, like it just, it just wasn't something that, you know, seemed uh, like affordable, even right. though I was doing it in college after that, you know, that sophomore year. So that first semester, so the military was paying for my pilot program for my for my they're paying for my college or they paid for my college so but the at that time 2015 a lot of schools were getting investigated because they were basically robbing the government for all the veteran pilot students mm -hmm. so at that time there was like a hold on the money and the you know the marine corps wasn't paying they you know, they weren't paying for everything all at once. They paid for all my college, but when they came to the pilot stuff, they kind of like, there were all these rules and stipulations. And so they weren't paying for everything, you know, all together. They're right. doing it now. They figured everything out and now they're paying for it now. But at that time they weren't. And yeah. And, um, yeah. So I had to like figure it out. So after that first semester, I quit, you know, I switched to airport management and that's what I ended up graduating with. 
And, you know, I quit for about three years where I was just like, you know, I'm just eventually, you know, once I graduate, I'll get a good job, whatever. And, you know, then I'll be able to afford it. And I mean, I have a decent job, but I, I don't personally feel like I can, I can afford it. So gotcha. uh, at least not right now, like because, you know, it's, it's like hard to do like adult life stuff and then, you know, follow your dreams. So. Um, yeah, I'm still working on that, you know, so yeah. I have a lot of adulting that I need to do that a lot of adulting that I need to pay for. So, gotcha. You know, and I'm not really trying to take out loans and stuff. So, you know, yeah, that makes sense. And didn't you come back to it at some point? Um, yeah, I did come back to it. Um, so, yeah, obviously that not obviously, but that first semester wasn't enough flying to uh, get the whole license because the way the school had it set up, it took the whole school year, like the whole uh, this fall and the spring semesters to to actually get each license or rating. And um, so I was only like halfway through it when I quit for like three years. Okay. And then, you know, I graduated and then like my first job out of college, I was installing like cable and internet for like the local company. And I did that for about a month and a half. And I realized I really hated going to people's house because not everybody cleaned their house. You know, there are times I couldn't even breathe, like walking into people's like dusty house, you know? So yeah. Um, so I ended up and I was trying to switch to do commercial installations and, mm. you know, they, they didn't want to let me. So I quit. And that was a Saturday I quit. And, you know, I was realizing, yo, I just quit my job and I had nothing lined up after that, you know? Right, so, right. you know, and for me, you know, a lot of people actually, when you're at like rock bottom and you feel like, shit, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Um, you know, you, you like, you get all religious and you like turn to God and stuff like that. So I was like, man, I'm going to church tomorrow. And um, yeah. Yeah. so I went to church and it was like my best friend's church from growing up and it was his parents were the pastors his sister was singing so on my way as i'm driving there i start like getting these very vivid like visions in my head that they felt like memories but i knew and i know it never happened you know like you can know when you're daydreaming and you're just right. random stuff and you're like oh i'm daydreaming right now right this didn't, this didn't feel like daydreams it mm -hmm. literally felt like something i've lived something I've experienced, but I know in my conscious mind, it's never happened before. Gotcha. You know? So I was feeling so crazy and I get to church, I'm standing in the back, my body's there, but my mind isn't there. My mind is literally, I'm looking at the floor and I'm thinking about like, um, all this stuff is going through my head of me standing at a podium. There's cameras flashing, like I'm at some kind of con like press conference. There's kids all around me and I'm getting recognized for the amazing things that I'm doing in the community through aviation. Hmm. And I'm just like, how is this like happening? Yeah. Like, I'm not a pilot. Like, I can't do this. You know, like this right. isn't something that I'm able to do because I'm not a pilot. So I remember I'm staring at the ground and my friend's sister who was singing at the time, she just stopped singing and she says my name. I look up and she's like, you know, God has a message for you. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I, I could use a message right now, right. you know? So she calls me down to the front, you know, she calls all the men, they start praying for me and stuff. And the first thing out of her mouth is you are not crazy. Mm -hmm. And mind you, like I was in the back there feeling like a complete nut job, <laughs> you right, know? So right. The first thing she told me was like, you're not crazy. That was the first thing she said. And um, so I really started listening when she said that. And she basically addressed like everything that I was thinking about, like not specifically, but aside from her saying I'm not crazy, she said, everything that you're thinking about right now is from God. Like, that's what she told me. And I was just like, I haven't seen this lady in five years, you know what I mean? So it was like for her to just like randomly, I've never talked to her about, you know, any of this, like she didn't know nothing, you know? And um, so I, she, and, but she told me I just needed to have some faith, which I was like, okay. <laughs> and I left church, I left church that day and I drove straight to, straight to the airport 
And I signed up for flight lessons again. And and this is after three years of, you know, quitting of just like giving up after three years. And yeah, I signed up and it was two hundred and ten dollars an hour. And I literally just quit my job the day before. Right. Know? And but yeah, I went through, I finished my training. I didn't have any hiccups with money. Like I ran out of money twice and both times, like money literally just fell in my lap, like literally fell in my lap. And I'm just like, I'm not talking about like fifty dollars. I mean, like thousands of dollars, like fell in my lap that I didn't even have to pay back. So, um, oh, wow. Yeah. If that can happen again, (laughs) I'd appreciate it, you know, but um yeah, there's some things that I'm just working on right now to like kind of like create like long term like generational wealth. So it's like gotcha. well, I'm focusing on that. St- I'm focusing all my money on that stuff and stuff gotcha. flying right now. But I wish I had extra to do the flying too. Yeah. You know? So you finally did get because I've seen like on your Instagram um like photos of you actually flying a plane. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Get- the pilot's license or at least the private the private pilot's license or uh i was just i just pretend to fly like i'm not really flying yeah really yeah it's just like photoshop <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. no no yeah i did i did get it i got it in about like four months so um okay um, so it went fast like yeah yeah, yeah. i was doing i was going at least two times a week oh. uh, so there were times when lessons got canceled for weather but mm-hmm. yeah i kind of just you know, blew through it. So, yeah. So, what does it feel like to fly? Like when you first like get the plane off the ground for the first time, and are like flying. Like yeah. So the first time I flew by myself, I was cheesing from ear to ear. Like I swear, the corners of my mouth were touching my ears, <laughs> and um, I was just like smiling so hard, like I couldn't believe I was in this airplane by myself. Like yeah. nobody's, like nobody sitting next to me. Like it was crazy. Like I, 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 only thing I could probably relate it to is like being like 15 or 16, or you get your driver's license and now you're, you know, your your parents aren't there. You're yeah, driving instructors in there. You're like really just really. I'm just really in this car by myself, you know. So right? it, it feels like that, but gotcha. probably like on a times a hundred, probably, you know. So yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna show when you actually finished everything in four months like how did you feel like when it was all done and now you, like you can fly yourself places like certain places um yeah I, I yeah I could fly myself places um I, I it just it just felt like a huge accomplishment you know and yeah. you know I immediately got to work on the things that I you know saw in that you know in my visions and you know within six months I was on TV and then like a month after that, like national television, like there were people in other countries, like calling my parents, like, Hey, I see your son on TV, you know, like it it was crazy, you know, and a lot of like cameras, you know what I mean? So with kids around me. So I was like, wow, like that really was God. Cause I felt, cause I'm telling you, like, if that never happened, like, I feel like to this day, I still wouldn't have pursued it. Like I still would have been making excuses of, why I couldn't do it or why it wasn't like, you know, something I could do right now or waiting for like perfect conditions. Like I literally had no job and um, I made it happen. So, I mean, and it, and it happened. So. Yeah, no, that's like, and it happened and you have a kid's, you have a children's book. So you became an author. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come inside. yeah. by the way, guys. This is- <sighs> <laughs> thank, thank you for buying it. I appreciate it for your support, you know? Yeah, no, I appreciate. No, I mean, it's like growing up uh, as a millennial, and I remember just thinking, I'm like, what books like had like main characters that were like people of color, you know, like children of color? And it's like nowadays, I like buy all the books that have like, what this girl boy. So, no, it's great that you wrote that book. Um, And it's funny because I showed it to my daughters, and they were like, what a pilot and they're black. You know, it was. You know, it's when we talked about like representation, yeah. and how important it is to see that, yeah. you know, to see that it's possible and that. Yeah, like, definitely. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I purposely made the characters like women and female because um, at the time when I first got like the idea to write it, I was, you know, teaching at an all girls elementary school. And, uh, you know, I would ask them um, 
you know, what they knew about aviation and they really didn't know much, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, I would ask them like what they wanted to be when they grew up and not one of them said anything aviation related. It was always the same thing. I want to be a police police officer. I want to be a, a beautician. I want to be um, a firefighter, you know, stuff like that. And these are girls, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, not that girls can't be firefighters and girls can't be police officers, but right to have so many like it was like almost unanimous and mm -hmm. typically i know growing up like the little girls in my school didn't want to be police officers you know but i guess it's like they just have a very limited um yeah. bank of occupations to pull from because that's what they see you know in their community all the time police officers and firefighters you know i, I really just thought it was strange that you yeah. know out of a class of like 25 girls you know 16 of them wanted to be police officers. I, I don't know if, if it's because one said it and then they just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do what she said, you know, and then I'm going to do what she said. So I don't know. But I felt like I had to do something to um, to, um, you know, just increase their awareness of what's possible and what's out there, you know. Gotcha. And, I, and again, I feel like God told me to write it. So I wrote yeah. it. Yeah, it's like part of the vision, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, great, like, it's a great story. It's a great story. And I think anybody who's interested, it's on Amazon and you should go um, buy it. And as, as someone who's a connoisseur of of like buying books that represent all races and, and try to be like diverse diversity, like if we're practicing diversity, equity, inclusion, I mean, it's just another book to add to that collection. Um, yeah. That's Thank you. Yeah. It, um, it, wasn't hard, it really wasn't hard to write. It's really just my life story sprinkled with a little bit of imagination. So it's like, I don't even think it's fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think it's fair to say I'm an author because I just literally, it's almost like an autobiography almost. Yeah. And uh, with, like I said, a little bit of imagination or maybe a lot of bit, you know, but yeah. It's not all true. It's based on a true story. <laughs> there we go. It's based on a true story. <laughs> but but it's good. But it's good. And you are an author. So that's, that's yeah. great. And I think it's inspirational for um, all children, um, you know, that, hey, there's there's a pilot that looks like me and he writes yeah. an author. And it's possible to have, like, multiple sources of income and multiple, you know, you can accomplish multiple goals yeah. simultaneously. So I think that's great. What would you tell anyone interested in becoming like start doing a career in aviation or wanting to be a pilot um um i would say go for an intro flight you know go on groupon and you know search you know uh introductory flights airplane flights you know just you can get really good deals on groupons on groupon or just google it google flight yeah. school near flight school near me and uh, just go on an intro flight, see how you feel in an airplane. You know, if, you know, if it's how do you feel looking out, listening to the radio, you know, getting to fly. Like, if, do you really like it or are you like, no, nah, I actually don't like this, you know, yeah. and then just go from there. And the flight school, they, you know, they'll talk you through the rest of the process and let you know what, you know, what's needed of you. Um, yeah, okay. it's, it's really yeah. it's really it's a lot easier than people think, you know. Okay, well, that's that's good to know, because I think it seems like one of those, like, it's, it's like an overwhelming goal to be like, okay, I gotta fly this yeah. plane, and like, everything you're thinking about, like, what yeah, the hell, yeah. like, but I know you jump from planes, like, yeah. <laughs> like it's, yeah, I see you, like, doing videos on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, skydiving is pretty fun. It's, it's flying, just your body. Yeah, yeah, and so, I know you had talked about, like, I think I saw a post the other day where you were just basically saying how, like, you know, getting other people to, you know, see like skydiving, flying, yeah. and just kind of, I mean, I know you do, um, was it like skiing or snowboarding too? Snowboarding, snowboarding, yeah. Snowboarding, okay, snowboarding. Yeah, I saw that. Just kind of, um, you know, outdoor activities. Yeah. Um, yeah. The you know, I, I tend, to, I like to do all of the typical black people don't do that, you know. Mm, I gotcha. <laughs> you know, gotcha. camping, you know. Yeah you know scuba diving free diving like all that stuff you know it's i'm not really into mountain climbing or like bungee okay. jumping and stuff like that but because i'm really not a fan of heights like i don't like heights <laughs> so i think I, I do think mountain climbing would be a bit much for me but i mean I, i'd probably try it at least once 
you know. Okay, at least once. I mean, you jumped. I bring it up because I was talking about it yesterday. So. Oh. <laughs> I know it seems like random. Like, where's mountain climbing come from? But right. <laughs> but, um, it's just an adventure thing that people do, you know. So yeah, that, that I haven't done yet. Okay, so it's like potentially on your list. Yeah, yeah. I still have a list. I still have my own list of adventures, and I'm trying to encourage other people to create their own list of adventures. You know. Gotcha. So, what would you say is like up next for yourself? Like, like where you would, you know, because I know you have the children's book, but are there what are other things that you know part of that vision that you? See? Yeah, I'm um, I'm working on a TV show. I'm trying mm-hmm. to uh, get that going. So. I need to start doing some filming for that. And that's kind of like, you know, the next big thing, you know, on my mind that has to do with this stuff. You know, I have some other like personal, like, you know, entrepreneurial goals as well. But, you know, as far as like this is concerned, um, yeah, uh, this TV show, this TV show. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. And I'm excited for you. Happy for you. Because this is this is just so great. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm happy and I'm thankful that you agreed to be a guest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, thank you for having me. I was like, I don't, I didn't even know I still did stuff that people wanted to interview me about. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, cool. Let's yeah, do it. I, yeah. I appreciate it. So, um, well, Jerome, well, thank you for being a guest and, you know, where can people find you if they want to see your post or your your video <laughs> uh tuskegee bloodline on instagram or um tiktok you know i just started using tiktok oh, okay. really, uh, it's it's doing a lot better than my instagram you know but um okay. like people aren't as stingy on tiktok as they are on instagram but yeah <laughs> it is what it is um i just throw stuff up if it does well it does well whatever <laughs> okay Well, thank you and everybody until next time.